Now, I want to I want to preface what this conversation with just the fact that this year, 2021, was the year that Eugene Melnick and the management group in Ottawa pegged as the year that they would go on a quote unprecedented run of success where they would spend to the cap and where they would be incredible. 2021 to 2026 was the target. Now, I understand that five-year plans change every day, but the Senators are not even spending money, no. which I know the pandemic can change things too, but come on. They're last in the league. They don't have to be last in the league, do they? Mm-hmm. And I guess they do. And they are super bad. The Leafs did lose to them, but Dom decision and I love this tweet, has them right now at a 97% chance to finish last in the division already. Good God. That's how as bad the Ottawa Senators are. They got to reacquire Andrew Hammond. (laughs) I don't know. They got to go on some sort of magical Hamburglar run. Trivia question for you, Steve, without Mm. looking at the standings. Ooh, okay. Okay. Jesse, do you have the standings in front of you? Do not look at them. No. No, no, Hey, no. good, good. How many points do the Ottawa Senators have this year, guys? I know this. Two. How many? Oh, three. Jesse says two. Steve says three. They have three points in 10 games. That is three out of 20. <sighs> that's not, like, that's bad. That's really bad. And here's the thing. Wow. You, you go out and you spend $20, 25000000 million on Matt Murray. It's not worked out so far. Now, to be fair to Matt, defense isn't pretty good. Like it's, it's pretty bad, actually. It, uh, and then without it's Shabbat, awesome. it's really bad. Mm-hmm. Then you got this guy, Brandstrom, that you should have played and that you got for Mark Stone. And remember, Montreal traded Max Pacioretty around that same time, and they got Nick Suzuki, and he looks really good. You got Brandstrom, which everybody was high on at the time, and DJ Smith just doesn't like him. That's, I, that was the tweet. At TSN Coaches, Simmer. Man. Coaches are something else. He doesn't else. like them. And it, it, the, well, and here's the thing. This is the time. If you're one, eight, and one, the time is to go, well, let's see what we got. Let's give them some reps. Who cares? What are you playing for? You're playing for next year and the year after and the year after. You're developing players. And you're not going to let a guy who was, what, a top five draft pick, wasn't he? He was very high. Very high. Highly touted guy. For a reason, you're not going to get him into a game? And apparently he is finally playing a game tonight. Well, and you could say, well, no, you couldn't. I was going to say you could say the same thing about Rasmus Sandin. But we're talking about two teams in completely different spots. Um, the, Ra- the Leafs are playing for now. It's incredibly difficult because, like, okay, so let's say the Sens plan and the Red Wings plan, or similar to the Red Wings, is we're going to protect our young guys by not making them play in this dog turd year. Yeah. Where are they going to play? If they're not in Europe, like the AHL, it was supposed to start tomorrow, I think, and that has since changed. We still don't have a time frame on that, do we? No, it's it sounds like they're working on an all-Canadian division for the AHL, which would be amazing. But um, we're now coming up on nearly a full year for some of these guys without getting into a hockey game. What was the last hockey game uh, Rasmus Sandin played? It was against his own team. The blue and white game. And then before that, when was it? Yeah, but you know, the Leafs are winning. The Leafs are winning. So Brandstrom, when the hell was it for him? How are, like, I wonder if everyone, like, you know, Scott Wheeler does his uh, prospect pool rankings. I wonder if any if, if everyone's got to adjust their expectations for how prospects are going to develop right now. Um, because to me, it's impossible any of them will be where you expect them to be because they have not played the sport they profess in. Mm-hmm. They are professionals. I but wonder, again, actually. I haven't played for over a year. On that track, Steve, I wonder what happens to first round round picks in the future. Are they going to be as good as the first round picks we've seen for the last five years, especially the top five? Because they're not playing. You lose a year of hockey at 16 or 17 years old. In, in drafting terms, normal terms, if you get injured for that amount of time, you're, you fall. You fall enormously. Now everybody's falling. And here's the thing. The NHL as a, as a whole is still pretty good. So the talent level might not be enough or it might take a lot longer. I wonder if that affects overall in the next few years, the value of a first round pick. We'll see. 
By the way, the AHL season kicks off this weekend for the American teams and the Canadian bubble, it has not had a, in a, a start date yet. So they were supposed okay. to start along with the American teams this weekend, but it's been delayed and they haven't released a new start date. So the okay, Canadian no. AHL teams got to wait, but the American sure ones kick it off on Saturday. There you go. I'm sure it's a logistical nightmare, but the like the Canucks farm team following them around, the Marlies following the Leafs around, like, God, that'd be great. That'd be that great. Be awesome. I just, I don't know how you make it happen, but if you can, if you can, it'd be sick. Wouldn't it be great to have early afternoon hockey? Like you have it at like the games at noon or it's at three and then, you know, it's done and then hockey and then you got it like an hour for dinner and then hockey night in Canada kicks off. Adam speaking give my language. That. Yeah. Give, give me, me that. that. Give me that. I mean, especially us lockdown people. What else do we do? We've watched all the shows. Um, now you guys saw it. Steve, Steve told me about this on the phone. Cause I actually missed this goal, but I went back and watched it. Jesse, have you seen the goal where Marcus Hogberg was not in the net? Uh, no, I don't okay. know what you're referring to. All right. So Jesse, let me ask you something. If you haven't seen this goal, please look this up, but don't worry about that yet. Jesse. Okay. Jesse, when you're playing goalie, what, what's your number one thing that you wanted to do? What's what I always talk about with goalies and it's okay if you don't get this question, right. But usually the thing is for most goaltenders, what is the most important thing at all times? Uh, see in the puck close. That's two positioning. It's in the name. It's in the name goaltender. Tending your goal. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> so what would, and I'm uh, again, you don't have to get this exactly, but what would hmm. tending your goal entail, Jesse? Where do you need to stand? Uh, uh, remaining in front of the net. Ah, no. between the two posts, you see. Ideally. Hmm. Right. Steve, do you mind looking up the screen grab? Uh, is it Dominic Cahoon who scored? No, it was Leon Dreisaitl, um, okay. who's He's just he's not going to miss. Um, Jesse, and- you're not, you've never seen anything like this at the NHL level. No, and I've never seen a shooter's body language uh, just be like, really? Like, the, the, he was, like, offended that this was what he had to shoot at. I can't find the screen grab, Jesse, but I have the actual goal. Okay. Yeah. I sent it to you. So just watch it in real time. I want to hear it's... Jesse's reaction. JFR. Yeah. Jesse fan reaction. JBFR, like dry side, he's offended that he scored this goal right now. He's all upset. Right, right. It's, it's loaded in here. He okay. didn't even plan on shooting. He wasn't going to shoot, but he's just like, well, I got, I got new guy over here. <laughs> Why was he doing that? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know where the posts were. Dry side was like oh, sad. No. So if you're describing this goal. Leon Drysaddle is coming up the right wing. He's on the right side. And it's a tough angle because normally goalies have that angled <laughs> off. Unfortunately, Senators backup goalie Hogberg, Hogberg, excuse me, is a little too far to the left and has opened the entire other half of the net up. And Leon Drysaddle is not going to miss that. Is not going to miss that. By the way, that goofy that game was goofy between the Oilers and Sens, eh? Eight five. What a crazy <laughs> yeah, stuff. and the uh the Oilers outshot or the Oilers, the Senators outshot the Oilers all game. It was like 30 to 15 or something like that. Well, because and, they were losing the whole game. No, so Friedman wrote about that and he said it wasn't score effects. He said they outchanced and outshot the Oilers all game long. They just couldn't get a save. They, they just, just couldn't get that. anything. Yeah. Now the uh the thing I wanted to bring up is I feel bad. And Steve and I talked about this on the phone separately a couple nights ago because we have little conversations. Brady Kachuk. Brady Kachuk. Mm. Your thoughts on Brady Kachuk, Steve, in this position that he's in? Well, so... You feel bad for him, right? uh, Yes, because... And and again, you know, young guy expected to do everything for a team that just stinks, right? Like, we've seen this before in Toronto, trust me. But Matthew Kachuk, similar player... Scores, you know, he's, he's one of his team's top scorers. Hmm. He's one of his team's top hitters, one of his team's top agitators. He is a gritty pest, right? Mm-hmm. Helps his team win, mm-hmm. right? Brady Kachuk, <laughs> like he's just, when you're, when you're the exact same type of player as Matthew, but you're on a garbage team. I feel like sometimes you're in danger of having the perception of you change. 
and you're just some sort of goon. Basically, did you see the nonsense he tried to pull at the end of that one Sens game where he pulled like some Cobra Kai kick after going for a hit on Adam Larson? What was that? What was that? I the Sens are a trap game because they're barely an NHL team the, mm-hmm. the way they look. Um, but they're also a trap game in because they have Brady Kachuk and other tough guys there to enable him. Mm-hmm. They're going to hurt people. People are going to get hurt this season, and it's going to be bad. And it's if you were bad. the Leafs and you're playing the Sens, what, what's your strategy? Uh, <sighs> score early uh-huh. and just hold on to it, I guess. Well, score early and keep your stars off the ice. Oh, right. I was going to say, yeah, sorry. Final five minutes that your stars cannot see the ice. Because it's – and Matthew does this too. Um, when his teams look, no, Matthew is more inclined to help the flames try to win. Kachuk is just going to, or Brady Kachuk, sorry, is just going to run around because there's no one there to help him. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's no one there to help. Him. Now watch the Sens are going to have like some big comeback win against the Leafs. Wouldn't I'm sure. But all. to this point, let's be fair. It hasn't happened. Now I want to throw this out there. Brady's got seven points in 10 games. Unimpeachable. You might say. That's wild for the It's same. actually pretty good. I yeah. want you guys to stop looking at the stats for just a second. Okay. No. Who is second in Ottawa scoring this year? Oh my God. I think I know the answer. Name someone. Nikita Zaitsev. Nikita no. Zaitsev. No. Am I right? No. No. Oh. Oh. No, no. In, in <laughs> points. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> in points, it is Josh Norris. Nikita Zaitsev did have that one game, and everybody's like, see? Toronto, Nikita Zaitsev's good. No, he's not. Uh, he's not. Like, come on. It's like Cody C. Everybody's going to have a game. Uh, so it's Josh Norris. Who is number three? This is even more perplexing. On the Sens? Yep. Number three in scoring. More perplexing. Mm-hmm. This one will shock you. Eric Branson. Okay. Jesse? Uh, Branistrom. No, he hasn't played a game. Exactly. Uh, it is. <laughs> that would shock me. Yeah, that would, that would be shocked. How did he do it? It's crazy. I'd be shocked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the answer is Austin Watson. Oh, okay. What? With five points in 10 games. Austin Watson. Okay, so maybe there's something to that even... Somebody's got a score. Team. Someone's got where a score. Where is wow. um, where's Gelchenyuk on that list? Oh boy, he's not he's playing on the fourth tonight. Fourth line, man. Oh no, my god, tonight. really? He's out. He's oh, out tonight. Uh, yeah, Cedric Paquette's in. What? Uh, happened? Uh, and yeah, yeah Gelchenyuk has played three games this year. How many points does Gelchenyuk have, guys? Zero. Yeah. Has Jesse? he has he scored at all? He scored a goal. That's it. Just that, one. Yeah, just that's one it. Ball. Boy, uh, that's pretty rough. Now, Gouch, uh, Gouch, buddy. and you know that looks what looks really bad is you have Genny Dad Dadinov, who was a pretty good get for them, and he's got two points. Uh, in, oh, sorry, three points in ten games, one goal, two assists. Not good. 